Welcome to this final part of our flat illustration project. This is where we're currently at, and I think it looks great. Still, I want another hero in my composition, so let's get to work on our hot air balloon. Activate the ellipse tool and click anywhere on the canvas. For my values, I'll use 175 by 220 pixels. Double click its thumbnail and change its color to FC622A. We're going to keep this orange line going. Get the Direct Selection tool and grab the top anchor point. If you see all of them, hit Enter and that will deselect them. We don't want a perfect ellipse, so we'll drag it down 10 pixels. Use Shift and use your down arrow key for that. Photoshop will tell you you're about to convert this shape into a regular path, but we're totally fine with that, so hit Yes. Next, I'll add the same old 8 pixel stroke from the hill layer. Copy paste it or manually add it, either way, this is going to help us a lot with our balloon. Now create another ellipse that's 100 by 210 pixels. This should be placed in the middle of your initial orange layer. Change its colour to FFC463, as this will match the windmill. It's a bit paler, but I'm liking this colour scheme so far. Finally, duplicate this layer and shrink its width to 30 pixels. Position it in the middle of these other two shapes and change its colour to our original orange. As you can see, this was a piece of pie, nothing fancy, it's all about making your life easier through smart choices. For the basket, let's get the rounded rectangle tool and input these values. 50 pixels for the width, 26 for the height. For the corner radius, the top ones should be squared off and the bottom ones, well, let's go with 12 here. Paste the same stroke but this time you'll notice it's way too thick for our tiny shape. So let's adjust it. I'll bring it down to about 5 pixels or so. This is much better. Oh, regarding the colour of the basket, it's essential we maintain somewhat the same colours from the windmill, so I'll go with BE, BE, BE. This is a pretty good light grey. Regarding its position, according to the balloon, I'd say about 40 pixels should be enough. Use your shift and arrow keys for that. It goes without saying that this basket should be placed smack in the middle of our balloon. Of course, as a variation, you can rotate this entire element to show that it's moving. In that case, the basket could be offset. Back to this project, let's add the ropes through the rounded rectangle tool. This is going to be simple, 50 pixels for the width, 8 pixels for the height. As for the corner radius, go with 4 pixels, even though those won't really show up. Change its colour to that purple from the stroke, and use Ctrl T to rotate it. I'd say an angle of about 75 degrees should work well, it's all a matter of blending the two together without having any spots that overflow. Once you're happy with the first one, duplicate it and flip it horizontally. Great stuff. I hope you're seeing how easy it is to create a great looking flat illustration without too much work. The hardest part is getting inspiration. For that, I recommend you use Behance.net or Dribble.com. Based on what sparks your interest, you can start to compile a list of elements. Once you break them down to their basic shapes, you'll soon see that there's nothing particularly difficult about it. I want to add sandbags for my balloon, so let's get the ellipse tool and create a new circle that's 8x8 eight eight pixels. Zoom in really close and select the top anchor point. Move it 6 pixels upwards. Once you're done, change its colour to FFE08D. Switch tools from the left panel, get the rectangle tool and create a new shape that's 2 by 6 pixels. This should be orange, more specifically FC622A. Try and place it above it so it just covers the last pixel from the sandbag. Group these two together and enable the same old stroke. The only change is going to be the size, only 3 pixels this time, and that's our sandbag. Take a moment to position it on the basket, most likely you should aim to connect it with the other stroke. Once you're happy, duplicate it and place the copy somewhere on the other side. While I sort everything out and I take another glance at my layers panel, I'd like to mention a few things I'd like you to experiment with. The colour scheme. Create different clouds, different shapes, add more trees, make the mountains look like they have snow on their tips and so on. Do your best to do some research, and there's no problem if you want to trace a design to get the hang of it. As long as it's for educational purposes, nobody is going to mind. Just be sure to credit the author in case you've made a near-perfect replica. Let's wrap this up with the same effect that we use for the windmill, so something that will indicate motion. 
get the rounded rectangle tool and click to set your measurements. 60 pixels for the width, 8 for the height. As for the corner radius, 4 is going to be just fine. Make it white and place it to the right side of your hot air balloon. Regarding the position, well, that's really up to you. At the end of this shape, create a small circle that's 4 by 4 pixels. I love these tiny details because they add character to my scene. Duplicate the rectangle but shrink it to 30 pixels. Place it about 15 pixels underneath this first one and repeat the process with those tiny circles. I'll speed this up as I create the last finishing touches and I center this element with the hot air balloon. Overall, that's our project. I know it was quite a lot of instructions, but hopefully you followed me until the end and you saw the approaches to keep it as simple as possible. If you want to tilt the balloon, make sure you don't get these white parts as that'll make it look like a crash is about to happen. Hit F twice to enter full screen mode and observe your result. I hope you're proud of yourself. This is a neat design that took about 30 minutes to create from start to finish. When you work by yourself, you should invest at least 90 minutes considering all your research. I'll see you in the next video where I'll present all the details of your assignment.